Great. So, uh, so I don't need an introduction since Ann just did it. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for inviting those of us who are coming in from out of town uh, to participate in such a great uh, event. So, um, so I represent Rainbow Village. I'm the executive director. And uh, first of all, I'd just like to give a quick snapshot of who we are. So we integrate uh, people with disabilities in the community uh, by transitioning them from institutional settings, uh, family homes, group homes, nursing facilities, into the community, into neighborhoods. Uh, we want individuals to have an opportunity to live in the community in a home that they can call their own. Uh, we partner with 18 provider agencies. So Rainbow Village exclusively owns and does the property management of the home. We lease the homes directly to the residents. Uh, and uh, we provide 100% of the support for the house in the community. Uh, we specifically provide residential homes for the IDD population uh, and modify them very specifically for their needs. Now these are uh, all individuals, let's say 98% of the people that we serve are, uh, require 24-7 support uh, and uh, agencies that we partner with provide all those supports and uh, these are individuals that are all low income. So they're all on, uh, they all receive SSI. Uh, we do not provide any support services. So we buy the house, uh, we own the property, hopefully with the intention of it's there for the lifetime of the individuals who are going to be living there. We're the landlord, so we collect the rent, and we are really a bricks and mortar property management company. And that means we do everything from uh, major capital improvements on the home, uh, throughout the lifetime of the individuals who are living there, uh, but we also change light bulbs. So uh, we pretty much do everything scoop to nuts. This is a huge advantage for uh, families who have a child uh, uh, living in one of our homes. Typically our population is an adult population. The average age of our resident is probably late 40s. I believe our oldest resident living in a rainbow home is 92 or 93 years old. And I think our youngest is around 30 years of age. Uh, and the organization was founded by nine families, all with a developmentally disabled child, who basically were concerned about what's going to happen to my son or daughter when I'm no longer able to care for them. And I think that, that is, that's something that every parent uh, with a child with a disability worries about. We take what we believe is a positive approach to affordable housing. So most organizations, and these are generally our partner organizations that provide community-based residential supports, are great at what they do. What they don't believe that they're good at is owning real estate and managing real estate. Uh, in some instances, with some of the larger agencies, we've had the opportunity to buy blocks of homes where they have owned this property and have come to us and said, we want to get out of this business and concentrate on what we do best. Would Rainbow Village be interested in buying uh, the homes? And we have. Um, managing the hard and soft costs connected to property management is really a hands-on skill set. Uh, and uh, most agencies don't have the money uh, required for a competent property and maintenance staff. Uh, and again, it is, it's an art. This is kind of an example of what we do. I will tell you that every one of our homes, with one exception, and today we own uh, 88 properties, uh, moving in the direction of owning 100. And every house is a ranch style home because a big portion of our population uh, can't navigate stairs. So it makes almost no sense at all for us to, to purchase two-story homes. Uh, and uh, the home on the bottom is, I think, our, it is our, last, is our latest home, and we actually built that custom 
uh, for three brothers uh, with cerebral palsy uh, who needed uh, a very unique and inventive space uh, and with very large wheelchairs and we had to uh, in the end uh, find the property and build out the house because uh, it just there just wasn't a footprint of an existing home that we could make modifications to that was going to meet all of their needs and keep it at a very reasonable cost. So Rainbow Village is a 501c3. Uh, we budget typically for the purchase of three to six homes annually. Uh, as I mentioned, we partner with 18 different service organizations. We serve currently today about 300 individuals. And it's spread throughout uh, three counties in the greater metropolitan area of St. Louis plus the city of St. Louis. Um, with a couple of exceptions, our residents all receive HCBS funding uh, for residential waivers. So they are on a full, waiver, full residential waiver. And our models work best uh, for three to four bedroom homes with three residents living in the home. Um, we have individual leases with each of our residents who pay a monthly rent. Uh, so we do not buy homes on spec. And there's an obvious reason for that. Uh, a family member reaches out to an agency and uh, typically agencies will then contact us and say we've got family or families that are interested in doing a home. They tell us where they want to live as opposed to us telling them where we want them to live. So uh, they give us uh, a handful of zip codes that they're looking in and it's our job to find the best possible choice of homes that are available uh, in, uh, in those neighborhoods that have the bones that we can actually go in and do demo and build those out custom for the individuals who are going to live there. Uh, many, many of our residents require accessibility. So, uh, and we all know there's a, there's a just we're, we're falling over ourselves with all the ex accessible homes that are out there. Am I correct? Yeah, I figured this much. Uh, there is a, such a huge need for homes that uh, provide all the accessibility features. And that's not just for an individual and or two individuals or three moving into the house that, has the, that does not have mobility needs today. When we buy a home, we make sure that the house has the right bones, that we can go in and make all those modifications to allow them to be able to age in place. So our goal is to have a resident uh, buy a rainbow home, or, or we buy the home and they live in the home, and we want them to live in the home for as long as they're physically able. So this is a quick financial snapshot of how we do what we do. So Rainbow Village has uh, relationships with a number of banking partners. Our typical mortgage is uh, 15 years uh, and we take out commercial rate mortgages. And our loan to value of what we borrow is somewhere in the range of 40% or less. And that's because all of our residents, for the most part, are receiving and living on only SSI, which leaves them very, very little that they can afford in rent. And we have to be able to ensure that we can operate the home, uh, pay a monthly mortgage, and our costs to maintain the home and operate that revenue neutral. In Missouri, uh, we have the advantage of receiving tax funding uh, for a percentage of the purchase price of the home and for the safety modifications of that home. Uh, the public taxing entity requires a distribution of funds to be subject to a second deed of trust, so they typically will uh, front our organization 25 to 30 percent of the purchase price of the home, and then they carry a second on the house. And it's a lifetime second. There's no repayment of the loan. Uh, as long as we continue to own the home and provide it for um, IDD 
participants. And then we fund up to 40% of the purchase, plus all the capital and accessibility improvements on the home. So each home we purchase requires us to fundraise in the ballpark uh, of $75,000, uh, sometimes more. So it's an expensive option. But we've been doing this for 45 years, and uh, candidly, we we kind of think we're okay at doing this now. Uh, and we've gone through uh, a really significant growth period over the past six years, uh, almost doubling the size of the number of homes that we own. And that's really based on need. Uh, there's so much need out there for, uh, for residential neighborhood options for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities uh, that we want to be there to provide that. So our investment and what it looks like is that uh, we're about 40% of the down payment. So if I took a model home and in St. Louis, obviously housing is not nearly as expensive as San Francisco. Uh, so let's say that we find a home in the $175,000 range. Uh, we have a footprint we work with. Uh, and um, I've got an exceptional team of folks that I have the pleasure of working with that really understand how to buy a home and how to go through the entire process. We are our own uh, broker, brokerage organization. We are our own real estate firm. Uh, so we keep everything in-house. As I mentioned, tax board funding is roughly 30% of the down payment plus we will write grants for some of the safety improvements. Uh, and then our bank mortgage is typically under uh, 40%. In this case, this model works for us and it allows us to rent the home to each individual uh, and their individual lease would be between three and $400 a month that they're paying in rent. Uh, a quick Note on why we think we're a little bit unique. First of all, we provide all the maintenance on the homes, as I mentioned, including changing light bulbs. Uh, we do all, this, all the lawn care and service and uh, snow removal. And we also do uh, outdoor landscaping for the homes. We have various uh, volunteer groups that work with us on that. We respond to all maintenance requests within uh, 48 hours, any emergency requests that were there within two to three hours. Uh, and we are 24-7, we have 24-7 availability on call. Our typical leases are three years. Annual rent increases are directly tied to SSI benefit. So over the past six years, our rents have increased less than 1% annually. Uh, and that's based on the government providing uh, cost of living increases for folks who are collecting SSI. So we don't see the income, rental income in our houses going up. Uh, we typically are fairly stagnant. So we have to get pretty inventive on how we are able to continue to operate that house revenue neutral and put in some significant capital improvements. Uh, we do preventive maintenance our, in our homes. So we're in our homes quarterly. I mean, if there's nothing ever, if no one would ever call us for anything, we're still in the homes about every three months doing all the prevent preventive maintenance, plus we do complete home inspections annually. And that generates uh, work orders for the organization. And uh, very specially, we age all of our capital assets. And we generate a remodel schedule for kitchens and bathrooms in every home. So, so and then finally, uh, what we're passionate about. So we provide passionate property management. We're committed, committed to pro providing homes that family members are proud to show to their friends and family. Uh, we survey our residents, partner providers, and family members regularly. Uh, and uh, we value uh, the relationships we have. So that's a little bit about Rainbow Village. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Whew. Lots of good information. Thank you so much for the invitation to join you today.
Um, I'll just make this really, really quick, and um, I, I brought some information with me, so if you want to take back more later, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to chat with you by phone or um, set up some other opportunity to connect. Um, so I'm just going to um, tell you a little bit about our organization, if I can make this go. So um, like a lot of the organizations you've heard from today, our organization is based on these core principles around self-determination, around community integration, and around partnership and collaboration. So very, very similar to many of the others that have, have shared with us today. Um, and these principles really do inform all of our decisions in everything we do. This is really very much at the heart of our, of our values. Um, you've probably seen this um, image from Simon Duffy. It just goes into a little more, and I'll, I'll kind of skip over this, but just speaks to that value of self-determination primarily. And, and um, like Michaela was saying and others have shared today, the, the deep conviction that this isn't just about providing services to people. This is about really um, making it possible for people to live as full citizens and part of the community that they can contribute to the community as well. Um, Moving Out is actually a statewide organization in Wisconsin. We've worked with families in all but two of Wisconsin's 72 counties. Um, and we have, I'll tell you more about the, the work that we do, but um, we also are in conversations with folks in um, other states, including Illinois. So I'm especially happy to have the opportunity to visit here today. Um, we um, have a home ownership programs. Our organization was founded by a group of families and they wanted to provide housing for their adult children with disabilities. And so um, over the last almost 25 years, we've helped over 1,600 families attain home ownership. And we also administer uh, programs that provide funding for rehab for safety and accessibility modifications. Um, we are also HUD certified count housing counselors. And that's what I just said. Oh, I'll just mention we do a home buyer education program um, that's free and open to the public for anyone who's interested in um, learning about home buying. And that's funded by an organization locally in Madison called the Home Buyers Roundtable. Um, right now, that's an in person program. We're really interested in in um, making that a high quality engaging online program. I know there are some online programs available, but they tend to be sort of, a, okay, I watched that video and I'm ticking the box and um, doesn't necessarily get at all the, the detail of some of uh, what we cover. We have developed over a thousand units of affordable rental housing. So um, about 13 years ago, our organization started in partnership with other developers, for-profit organizations, and kind of dipped a toe in the water, started developing projects. Now we have over 17 projects throughout Wisconsin, mostly in the southern part of the state. And these are um, mixed income properties, um, mixed income uh, rental properties that usually about 20 to 25 percent of the units are set aside as supportive units for folks with any kind of permanent disability. And the other units are maybe 50% up to 80% um, of area median income. They're often um, mixed use as well as mixed income. So many of our properties, the photo that, um, that you see on this slide is actually uh, where we have our offices in a commercial, small commercial space in this property. Um, so some of our other mixed use properties have um, a variety of either other offices or retail and so forth. Um, we're working on a project now that I'm very excited about in partnership with a nonprofit child care center to have their um, child care and early childhood education on the first and possibly second floors with affordable housing above and with obviously some ground floor units for accessibility. And we're very excited about that because as a nonprofit organization, they have a sliding fee scale so they can provide 
um, accessible childcare to people who live in our project and also potentially provide employment opportunities, volunteer opportunities, other kinds of synergistic opportunities because we have such good mission alignment. I'm trying to talk really fast. It's hard for me because I'm from Texas. <laughs> All right, I talked about all that. That, that was my speed presentation, so um, you're welcome. I just want to give you an introduction to, our, to us and sort of our approach to this. Um, myself, my partner Dan Tucker, you know, comes to this really from a, a, a call to action from, you know, folks that are, you know, that are in our lives. In my case, it's a, a lifelong friend who has a son now in his early 20s, who I've literally known since the day he was born, he was on the autism spectrum. And, um, you know, as I've watched him grow up and, and, and talking to my friend and sort of their, their hopes and their desires for his, for his future and, and, and some of the frustrations that they found uh, in, in, in trying to find a solution for his, uh, his living situation in the future and, and they want him to be as independent as possible. So one day he turned to me and said, listen, you're in the real estate business. Why don't you do something about this? So, you know, challenge accepted and, and uh, you know, uh, 18 months or two years in the future, you know, here, here we find ourselves. Um, you know, and Dan has a similar story as well. Um, so, uh, again, I just want to give, give you an introduction to us, sort of our approach um, that, that, that we've taken to this point here. Um, and at its core, just to, you know, in the interest of time, it's grounded in a lot of the things that we've heard here today. You know, inclusion, um, you know, community engagement and involvement, uh, independence, that sort of thing. So that's at the core of everything that we've, that we've tried to do here uh, in coming up with a solution. So, you know, we came to this uh, a little bit as outsiders because, you know, we are not, you know, directly impacted. These are not our family members, but they are people that are important in our lives. And so where we started was by embarking on really an educational process for us. And, and we spent some time, a lot of time, uh, talking to groups of various types, you know, CIF, you know, your peers, um, a number of groups who have developed solutions and were, you know, uh, gracious enough to let us come in and, and, and see those and learn from those. Um, we talked to, we spent some time with other folks that are in the room here today, uh, you know, Chris Turley helping us understand from a design perspective and, and, and what's important there. Uh, we also talked to people who are uh, uh, financial services providers, uh, advisors who specialize um, in assisting families, um, you know, in these situations. We really want to try to approach it from a lot of different angles to really understand uh, the depth of the problem, which nobody in this room, you know, needs to hear from me. Everybody certainly recognizes that. So, um, you know, Dan and I talked a lot about sort of, okay, now that we've learned what we've learned, right, now what are we going to do about it? And so we, we, we talked a lot about, well, should we, you know, go buy a building and, 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 and re renovate it and redevelop it, you know, based on what we think we know, um, and then invite people in to see if it, if it meets their needs. And, I, and instead of that, what we really came up with is more of an approach to, uh, to solving this issue rather than, you know, diving right in on, on a building and, and hoping or that what, what we think we know uh, is beneficial to folks. Instead, we've really come up with sort of an approach and a concept to helping families. And it's always, you know, started with families. And a lot of that comes from my interactions with, you know, with my friend and his wife and, uh, and their needs. Uh, you know, Dan, same thing. And, and what we decided was it's, it's really got to start with the families and what they want and what they need and trying to, you know, create solutions for them. How can we bring our knowledge, our expertise, our backgrounds, um, you know, in the real estate you know, business uh, as, as owners and operators and developers and help them create the things that they want to create, right? And, and, and that's, you know, sort of what you're doing with folks as well, right? So, you know, we sort of grabbed onto that and, and an extension of the kind of things that, that, that you guys are doing as well. So I'll, I'll take you through this real quickly. Um, you know, Dan and I both have been in the real estate business for, you know, for 20 plus years. Um, uh, you know, I'm also an accountant. And so I think, you know, some of that just sort of led to our, our, our pragmatic approach to, you know, to developing these solutions. You know, what can we do to, as quickly as possible, find opportunities to help families solve this, you know, this, this need? Um, uh, real quickly, you know, we've come up with sort of, a, you know, several dimensions that we think, you know, are important, you know, for creating these things. Um, certainly the, the design is important. It's got to, you know, it's got to work, um, you know, for those families, the needs of those individuals that are going to be living in that environment. Um, but we also recognize that, um, and again, this comes from some of the things that were expressed to me and to us, you know, from, you know, from our, our connections that, uh, and I, I think I heard another comment about this earlier today, that what people want is a place where people can go and really feel a part of the community where uh, not just the community at large and the outside environment, but inside that, you know, uh, that, that residence, um, you, know, uh, you know, have some friends, have some social engagement opportunities, that sort of thing. Um, you know, my, my friend expressed a story to me that, you know, he knows that his son would be perfectly happy 
you know, at, at some point living independently in an apartment somewhere. And he would go to his job and he would, you know, pick up McDonald's on the way home and he'd go to his apartment and he'd play video games all night, perfectly happy all alone. Um, but they know that that is not, you know, the enrichment that they want for his life. They want him to have sort of a community that he can really feel a part of, right? So that, that's also a big, a big part of it. From a location perspective, we've really focused on projects that would be located in what we're calling, you know, uh, you know the urban suburbs, Evanston, Arlington Heights, Palatine. So it would have access to transportation, access to all sorts of amenities, you know, shopping, restaurants, you know, movies, that sort of thing, you know, libraries, um, uh, uh, you know, transportation, uh, occupational opportunities, you know, within, um, you know, that environment. And again, it's the same idea of being a part of sort of the, the broader community, being really a part of it. Uh, so, uh, you know, our concept is, and, and we'll get into a little bit, is, you know, finding buildings, multifamily buildings, uh, you know, most likely, you call it six, eight, ten units that are within those environments. Uh, and that has another benefit, which we'll get into, um, you know, in, in a minute. The other thing is we know that we are clearly not qualified to provide services into uh, in, into, the, into the buildings and the properties themselves, right? So it would be to partner with someone like CIF to help us, you know, uh, build uh, and, and promote and, and include, a, you know, the appropriate level of services that need to happen in that building given the needs of the, of the residents, you know, in any individual project. Um, and the other thing that's really been transformative for us, and, and we have spent some time talking to a couple of the folks that were here today um, about some of these enabling technologies and, and the technology service providers, and, and we think that's an incredibly transformative and important aspect to bring into this that's, that's very enabling and allowing people to sort of live in these independent, independent environments. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot here, but the idea is that it would be sort of, you know, multifamily, sort of, again, urban-like, although we're, you know, doing it in suburban environments, you know, call it 6, 8, 12, you know, units. Um, you know, the intent is for them to be structured as condominiums, so there is an ownership concept here uh, in what we're talking about. Um, you know, with regard to services, again, it's, it's a lot of it will end up being designed around what the individual families and residents, um, you know, uh, you know, requirements are. But the intent is for it to be some limited scope, you know, services where, you know, maybe it's in the morning, make sure everybody's, you know, off and, and, and going off to, you know, whatever their, uh, their daily activities are. Maybe be there in the evening, you know, receive folks, make sure everybody gets home into their evening activities, their eating, that sort of thing. Um, but the biggest piece of it is to bring some of that social engagement. So it's, hey everybody, let's go. We're all gonna go see the, you know, the latest Star Wars movie, or we're gonna go to a ball game, or we're gonna go to the museum, or whatever it is, and sort of create some of those, uh, some of those social engagement activities as well. Um, uh, you know, the intent is for each individual resident, um, you know, to sort of really self-direct what other types of, of services that they're, gonna, that they're gonna engage in or require. Um, you know, so the intent is not for all that to necessarily happen within that existing environment. Um, but again, we know that, you know, each case is individual and unique. Um, and so certainly a lot of those things can happen, you know, in, in that residential setting. Um, but again, the intent is that, you know, uh, folks, you know, probably as they're doing now, um, would continue with, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, whatever providers are using currently, um, you know, to provide services to them. Um, again, the goal is here to, you know, again, uh, it always starts uh, with this idea of creating community and belonging and that sort of thing, um, uh, social interaction, um, and just continue to put people on the path to, you know, to true independence. Um, you know, these are places where if people want to live there for the rest of their lives, that's great. If, you know, after a period of time they've, you know, <coughs> you know moved into a, into a situation and in, in, to the point where they can, you know, uh, you know, move to a sort of more you know, market rate type situation, that's great as well. Um, uh, as far as the units are concerned, and we'll get into the sort of the design or the, the concept here you know, in a minute, but um, the idea is um, for, uh, this, this, is, this is intended to be market, market rate housing. Uh, we know that there's a tremendous need um, you know, for affordable, um, you know, but uh, you know, given sort of the locations that we're talking about, um, and really, again, sort of this pragmatic approach, the ideas we want, uh, a couple of things we've always talked about is, you know, it needs to be, you know, feasible, viable, it needs to be scalable and replicable, right? The idea is that we want to try to, you know, help as many folks as we can. Um, and so, you know, for us, at least at the beginning, it starts with projects that are, you know, financially viable. They need to be able to attract capital, uh, you know, so that we can get them constructed and built, um, and that we can demonstrate that, that they are viable projects um, on their own. Um, 
so that's that. Um, yeah, it's just a short list of some of the folks that we've met with, you know, to try to, again, learn about some of the, the, some of the solutions that are out there, uh, some of the service providers that are out there, and just the various aspects that are, you know, that are involved, that are involved here. Um, you know, this is just, you know, a, a picture of a, a generic building by example. This is not a, this is not a, a, a project of ours at this point. Um, but again, the idea is that it's, you know, call it six to ten units, uh, individual condos. Doesn't mean people can't have roommates, but you know, you know, fully functional units, sort of your, you know, up to date, you know, condo quality. So you know, full kitchens, um, you know, uh, one, you know, one and two bedrooms. Uh, uh, the idea is that each building would have some sort of common gathering area. You know, whether that's for you know, put some fitness equipment, some computers, you know, a big TV to, to show movies, but a place where people can congregate. You know, within the building. That's again sort of that idea of of, of creating that that environment. Um, you know, from a maintenance and management perspective, um, you know, similar to what we've heard. You know, there would be uh, you know professionally managed by a management company that could that could be us. Uh, it could be by others. Um, that's the idea. Um, again, as far as location, um, uh, you know, we like the idea of these these urban suburbs uh, because of you know. All of the, the positive aspects that we have there. It's the you know, same reason that everybody wants to go live in those environments, right? Transit oriented type developments with all the things that, that come along with it. Um, uh, let's see, anything else on here? Um, oh, one of the things that we have talked about is whether, because of, we're talking about doing that in these environments, sort of these, these urban down, these suburban downtowns, um, is, is perhaps mixed use uh, you know, components. Number one, that can help defray some of the cost of the unit, the residential units themselves, because of the commercial opportunities that exist. You know, but also they may uh, create um, occupational opportunities. You know, for folks that are in the building right there um, in those those commercial spaces. Uh, so that's another thing that we've that, that we've talked about. Um, you know, again, we don't want to get into too much detail here, but the idea is that we would be working with a service partner uh, to provide appropriate levels of service, you know, within the building and help us and, and help the residents, you know, uh, and their families, um, you know, with, uh, you know with, with all those, you know, and, and, and those related activities. Um, again, the idea with the service level is it's, it's sort of limited in scope, and, and some of that is, 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 is uh, uh, a way to help sort of you know minimize the ongoing monthly cost of providing you know services within the building, which would be part of the recurring HOA um, you know assessment. Uh, so the idea is to make sure there's somebody there in the morning, make sure everybody's up and out, you know, out into their daily activities. Uh, you know, maybe there again at the end of the day, make sure everybody's home safe. Uh, you know, they're fed and they're you know into their evening activities, and then again provide some of that social interaction and social engagement you know above and beyond that as well. Um, uh, you know, we've also talked about um, the idea of, uh, you know, partnering with people like Uber or Lyft or that sort of thing to provide, you know, transportation services, that sort of thing as well. Um, you know, we heard from the technology providers today. I certainly can't do them justice. They all, um, uh, you know, did a great job explaining. But again, we think that this sort of thing is, is, is tremendously enabling and allowing, um, you know, that sort of that limited scope of service, um, you know, from a, you know, a personal touch standpoint. Um, you know, this picture actually, not that we the developer are the center of the universe or anything like that, but the idea here is we get a lot of questions about sort of, you know, what is our role? What, you know, what, what, what do we do, you know, um, you know for families? And uh, again, it always starts with the, you know, with the individual family's objectives. And again, our approach and our goal is to try to um, work with families, uh, understand, you know, what that, that family group's objectives are. And, you know, I think critically to try to find a project that they can control, right? So, you know, there are, obviously there's a lot of, you know, really cool projects that are being developed. Um, but as we heard, the demand is extraordinarily high. Um, and, you know, for those 18 units, 180 people are going to show up and, and want to rent them. So I think what we're trying to do is see if we can find a way to, once we understand what those objectives are uh, for Dan and I, because this is what we sort of do with our lives, is, is go and find projects that, you know, that the group can, can sort of control and design in their own way. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, that we can hopefully build as of right. So if you think, if you think about it, um, you know, from a zoning perspective, we heard, and, and it's, it's absolutely true. I mean, you, you sit in the municipal, you know, process for multiple years and, and the design and the construction and all that. And I think our, our hope and our goal would be to find projects that we could really do as of right. You know, go into these communities, find a, uh, you know, a six flat or, you know, or a 12 unit building, right, that's already zoned, you know, for this purpose. You know, make the appropriate you know modifications and changes, right, and 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 go from there. So again, you know, our role as the developer, as we see it, is really just 
the folks that sit in the middle and just sort of bring all the aspects together, right? So it's, you know, again, starts with the family's objectives. From there, it's, you know, you know finding, you know, the opportunity for what, what's the property, right? What's the project going to be? Um, and going through the design and construction process, um, all the municipal, municipal uh, and if there are any municipal uh, requirements, um, getting through that process. Um, you know, handling all the legal aspects, you know, uh, developing uh, HOA documents and, and, and condo docs and, and just getting through the closing process. Um, you know, a big piece of it is construction financing, so leveraging our existing, you know, banking and lender relationships to actually get the thing built. Um, and then managing, obviously, the construction itself and all the trades and all of that uh, and getting that done. And then, you know, once it's complete, again, um, you know, managing the, the, the you know, the, the, uh, the building, you know, ex post. Um, again, uh, you know, the target residents are the folks in the room, right? Yeah. Okay, so we can go get past that. Um, you know, we certainly understand um, that there are, are clearly financial considerations, and that's one of the reasons why we spent some time working with these financial planners who have some really interesting ways to help families and folks, you know, finance what is ultimately the purchase of, you know, of, of a condo unit. Uh, so, and we can, we can talk about that in greater detail. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, you know, we are going to be around, yeah, we are going to be around uh, to answer any specific questions, and I do have some copies if anybody, if anybody wants. Thank so. you.